Hello, my name is Trinity. What's up, my name is Elliot. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Weekly, Weekly News. We have an announcement. The vaccine clinic at HB Lee is open around 3.30 through 7.30 p.m. Today, anyone around the age of five and older are welcome. COVID-19 vaccines are available. Oh, and no appointment needed. Reminders to eighth graders that RHS, all ninth graders will either take access or AVID. Those interested in AVID need to complete the application by February 11th. Eighth graders of eighth grade advisory teachers have the QR code for the application. Hey, did you know that this month is Black History Month? Yes, I did know about this month is Black History Month. Oh, looks like the next segment is all about it. Hey, my name is Promise. My name is Ashayla. And today I'm here with... My name is Amir. <laughs> my name is Andrew. Okay, guys, so why do you think it's important to celebrate Black History Month, not just for February, but all year round? Because back in the day, there was always fi someone fighting for different reasons for us to have equal rights. And now that they succeeded, I feel like they should be celebrated not just in February, but every single month of the year. Yeah, because without them, we would have equal rights. Okay, thank you. My name is Ashayla, and today we're here with... Mr. Scott. Okay, why do you think it's important to celebrate... Celebrate Black History Month, not just for February, but all year round. Well, I think it's important that you have to know where you come from to know where you're going. And I think it's important for uh, kids to have a certain, certain morality. Uh, growing up, I felt my ancestors, while I was uh, doing a lot of things in my life, and I didn't do a lot of things because I felt like I was disrespecting my heritage. And I think that's what we're missing nowadays. Uh, I think uh, our kids should learn some history so they can know where they're going and know where they've been also. So I'm just saying, hey, I think if you know who you are, then you can be who you're going to become. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you. Hi, my name is Promise. My name is Ashayla. And my name is Mr. Craig. So, Mr. Craig, why do you think it's important to celebrate Black History Month, not just for February, but all year round? Well, I think it's important to celebrate it this month, especially because it is a highlight to the things that we do all year. Uh, Black History Month is a time where we get to tell our stories and we get to celebrate the people who made us who we are today. Uh, people like Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, W.E.B. Du Bois, Malcolm X. Uh, the civil rights movement, all those things are important. And this month, I would like to say, is the, the month where we get, get to highlight those achievements. But I celebrate it all year round because I have to be black all year round. There's not a day that goes by where I wake up and I'm a different color. I get in the shower, I'm black. I go to work, I'm black. So black lives matter and black people do great things. Thank you for your time, Mr. Craig. Guys, right, we're back. My name is Promise. My name is Ashayla. My name is Elliot. Elliot, why do you think it's important to celebrate Black History Month, not just for February, but all year round? <laughs> um, Black History Month is one part of the year where we get to celebrate our history and uh, what uh, what our ancestors did, like um, the Secret World World, you know what I'm saying? Harriet Tubman, you did, you already know what it is. Uh, Martin Luther King and the Civil Rights Movement. Like, uh, there's not one day uh, that goes by that I'm not black. You know what I'm saying it's difficult being black in a state that people don't really like black people like that. So that's why I try to do my best to celebrate Black History Month, not just February, but all year round. I like it. Thank you for your time. That was very inspirational. Do you know Oregon Battle of the Book? Yes, I do. But if you want more information about it, you better listen up. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Today we're going to talk about OBOB. OBOB stands for Oregon Battle of the Books. It is a statewide competition. Here are some of the books. They meet Monday during lunch. The winning team of HB Lee will go against other teams from other schools. 
There's also a chance to go against the teachers. There's a badge in the library for more information. Thanks for watching. Hope we win. If you like the party, well then the Lunar New Year party is a big party. Good morning. Today we'll be talking about Lunar New Year. Lunar New Year is a holiday celebrated by most of the Asian community. We celebrate Lunar New Year for the arrival of spring on a new lunar solar calendar. In Thailand, we usually celebrate Lunar New Year by having a giant water festival. We have water buckets, water balloons, and water guns, and we shoot them at each other on either trucks or by walking down the street. You can always go to the temple and eat and pray. We usually have rice cakes, papaya salad, sticky rice, and much more Asian food. In Vietnam, we usually have a friends and family gathering and eat a bunch of food together. We also wear traditional dresses and gowns called ao yai, and then we usually watch lion dancers and give out red envelopes filled with money to wish us good luck and wealth for later in the future. This year, Ms. Prado's art students made portraits of tigers to represent the zodiac calendar for Lunar New Year. Here is some of the artwork. It's February, with every new month, there's jokes. Here's Feb Funnies. I can't wait for Tuesday, February 22, 2002. We call it Tuesday. I worry about my neighbor who was born on February 29th. He says he's 10, but he looks 40. What happens when a toad's car breaks down? It gets towed away. Do you hate being run over in the halls? Then this segment is for you. Hello everybody, today we're going to be explaining the dangers of running in the halls. Because not only can you hurt yourself, you can also hurt others. And here's a quick demonstration. And that's why we do not run in the halls. Now let's try that again. The right way, of course. Hey Trinity, what's your favorite book? My favorite book is Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. Here's Miss Weber's favorite book. This week's voice lit, we're interviewing Miss Forrestal. She's recommending the books Black Enough by several authors, Solo by Comet Alexander, and Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. Hi, I'm Miss Forrestal, and this week I'm recommending some books for It's Lit. I want to celebrate Black Voices. It's February, which is Black History Month. And so I chose three books, each of which focuses on Black voices, Black experiences, and written by Black authors. The first book I'm recommending is Black Enough. This is written by a variety of different authors. These are all short stories. These stories are about the different experiences faced by young people. I'm sure you will find at least one you can relate to. I'm positive there's something in here that will make you laugh, and you can probably even find a story that'll make you cry. The second book is written in verse, and that means the entire story is told through poetry. If you think you don't like poetry, I challenge you to try again. This book, Solo, is about a young boy struggling with his father, trying to keep his girlfriend, and dealing with a long-held family secret that makes him question everything he thought was true. Music seems to be the only thing helping him get through life. If you are a music lover, this book is for you. The final book I want to recommend is a graphic novel. A Long Way Down tells the story of a young boy who must face the death of his older brother and whether or not to take revenge. 
Throughout this story, he meets various people who tell their stories to help him decide what to do or what not to do to find closure. Beautifully illustrated and a powerful story. This I'm sure you will love. Right, thank you for recommending those books, Ms. Morstel. Hopefully we'll all enjoy them and reading them. Um, and thank you for watching this week's It's Lit segment. We're back. Here is some SEI information. Hello, I'm part of the digital leadership um, media. My name is Angel, and your name is? My name is Mr. Craig Irving. Hello, Mr. Craig. How has your day been? My day's been pretty good. That's good. Well, today I am here t because I had some questions. Um, I have been hearing about a group, a program named SEI. Could you, ex I have just heard a bit, but could you explain like their history, their mission, um, their goals, etc.? Yes. Uh, so Self Enhancement uh, Incorporated is what SEI stands for. Uh, it's a program that's been here since 1981. So they've been in the community, in the Portland community for a very long time. And they're pretty much here to just help uh, realize the potential of underserved youth. Uh, they serve primarily African Americans and um, and others that are in their community. And so that's pretty much what we're doing here at H uh, HB Lee. We want to help you guys stimulate your ambitions, uh, realize your potential. We offer after school programming. We have incentive based rewards. So if you're doing good in class, you're doing good in school, your teachers is giving you good reports. You know, we have snacks, trips, all types of things, and even like, you know, monetary uh, incentives. So you can even receive money or a gift card for just doing simply what you're supposed to do when you come to school. So let me see if I understand. So if this student is part of SEI and he's doing a great job in class, he could earn prizes, gift cards, etc., right? Yes, we actually have a program right now uh, called Blue Card, Gold Card. So that means if you are a 3.0 student or a 4.0 student, you basically are eligible to become uh, on one of those in one of those two categories. So Gold Card, usually they go on the big field trips and things like that. And Blue Card, they still get something too. But if it, you know, it's not as grand as being as Gold Card. But either way, both titles are given to those students who excel very well in class and school. Okay, um, and for then our fellow students here at HB Lee could know, uh, when is the after school program? So after school programming is from 2.30 to 4.30. Uh, you do have to be a part of SEI or SUN to participate in after school programming. Uh, as I said before, we are a culturally specific program so we primarily are recruiting african-american students so if you are african-american or identify as black or african-american you can come by to room 304 uh and at the, is this room 304 i believe it's it's either 304 305 or 306 i believe it's 306 you can come by here you can speak with me mr craig irving or miss trisha beavers and you can request an application okay so so the students will have to come here into the SEI room and receive an application. Yes. After you uh, get your application filled out, we even give you a gift card for having the application filled out. It's a $10 gift card to Fred Myers. Uh, and that's just a way to kind of just start the relationship to show you that we are here for you. In addition to, you know, providing resources like tutoring, the after school programming for you guys, uh, your parents are also able to get things. So rental assistance, uh, you know, if they if they need help with groceries, anything like that, we are here for that as well. OK, Mr. Craig, well, th th thank you super much for your time. And I thank you guys. I really appreciate the work you guys do. And I look forward to talking with you guys more about SCI. Okay. Back to you, news anchors. That was good information. Indeed. Looks like the raffle is up next. I wonder who will get picked. Well, let's find out. Okay, start off with 6th grade, and we're going to 
sixth grade is. Uh, hello, HBL students. I'm Mr. Riedel, and I have some sixth graders here who are helping me do the planner raffle for this week, okay? We have a green one in here. Those green ones should not be in here. This is the week we did the orange planners, okay? So first one is going to be Sebastian. Go ahead and pick out the first winner. What do we got? Julian. Julian from Mrs. Davila's. All right, nice. Everybody clap for Julian. Great. All right, next up, we have Daniel picking. Uh, Connor from Miss Evans. Who's Miss Evans? You don't know Miss Evans? Nah. She's eighth grade teacher. So Connor from Miss Evans class. Let's clap for that winner. And the third winner. Who is the third winner going to be? Anthony. Anthony picked out who? This has no name. No name? name. Okay, uh, if there's no name, you don't win. Sorry. I redo this. <laughs> Pick a different one, okay? Come back real quick. <laughs> okay, this is one. This is an example of when we can't read your handwriting. Uh, it needs to be legible. You don't win if we can't read your handwriting, okay? Pick another one. Um, no. Who is that? Mimey? Mimey? Do you guys know who Mimey is? Mimey. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. From Lobster's class. All right, let's clap for the winners. Thank you very much. All right, that's it. Congrats to the winners of the raffle. Oh, it looks like we're running out of time. My name is Elliot. My name is Trinity. And, and thank you for watching, watching the weekly news. news. Hello, students. Uh, oh, wait. Well, students. Right. Mommy? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to edit that out. <laughs> Where should I put it in for bloopers? Bloopers, bloopers. No, no, no. No, no. This year is the tiger, and Miss Prado's art students have made. What did I make? This year's. What? The silence, you little. Yeah, this is a blueberry. Uh huh. And we also eat. Oh, yeah. This year, Miss Prado's art students. Ah!